Right, so um, I'll be talking about responsive web design today. Um, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm also crediting my coworker Scott. Uh, Scott has done a lot of the work involved in this project at my university. Uh, unfortunately, he's a Windows user, so I think coming to this conference would have been his own personal hell, so he sent me instead. So we'll be looking at uh, what is responsive design. Um, has anybody here heard of responsive design? Yep, a few, some, good. Uh, we'll be looking at some examples just to try and give you an idea of what it looks like. We'll be talking about uh, why we should bother with responsive design for our websites. I'll talk a little bit about the ANU website that I work on. And then I'll go into some of the implementation details. Uh, as always, when you're talking about websites, there's a section titled What About IE? So we'll get to that at the end. So what is responsive design? Well, basically this is a technique to respond to the screen size of the, user, of the user's device. Um, we don't look at what their browser is. We don't look at what type of device they have. All we're looking at is the, the width of the screen. Uh, we could also look at maybe the, the dots per inch or the height. Um, in our case, we'll just be looking at the width. Um, so to give you a, a quick um, demo, what I'm talking about. So here we have a, a website. Uh, <coughs> let's make that a little bit smaller. And that's not going to work. Crap. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Go away, quick time player. Let's just close that and try that again. That's what I get for trying to be too organized. Yeah, I think my, uh, my laptop doesn't like being on this small screen, which is a pity. Gah. No, it's not working. This is going to be a very short presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that? Yay, there we go. OK. So here we have a website. You can see they've got a big logo up the top. They've got some navigation at the top. They've got a big image. And they have four small articles along the bottom. If we were to look at that on a smaller device, you'll see that the navigation at the top has changed. Um, you can still do everything that you could on the large site, but there's not as much text there. This image has dropped down in size. And instead of having four things across the screen, we've now got blocks of two. If we go even smaller, you see this navigation has changed again. They've moved the logo. That's smaller again. And rather than having four across or blocks of two, we've now just gone to everything underneath each other. Um, so all of the content is still there. We're just moving it around the screen to respond to the different de uh, device sizes. Let's have a look at a few others. Um, OK. This is the Earth Hour website. You'll notice as we um, use a smaller device, the navigation at the top, the text has uh, changed down to smaller text. And then we once, when, once we get down to a smaller device again, everything's moved around and um, it still fits on the device. All the content's still there, just laid out differently. Uh, what else have we got? This is a newspaper. 
So on the, uh, the full size here, you can see their navigation, their listing, news, metro, arts, business, so on. That stopped working again. Come on, Safari. No. Okay, let's uh, give up on that demo. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so here are some links. You can look at them uh, at, your uh, at your leisure. Basically, load the site up, grab the side, move it in and out. You can see how the, um, the site is responding to your screen size or your device size. Um, so in the AUC, I did a quick little look. Out of the 37 member universities, five had a responsive design. So anybody here from those unis? Nobody won. Hooray! Congratulations to you. Um, did you work on that site? No. Okay. So um, it's starting to build. People are becoming aware of this. Um, so why would we bother having a responsive website? Um, so let's look at some figures here. The total annual shipments of smartphones exceeded PCs plus tablets for the first time in 2011. So there are a lot of people out there with smartphones that have a web browser on them. And another set of numbers here, uh, predicting that people looking at your websites will be more common on a smartphone by 2013. So you think about your current website looking at it on a tiny little screen. Um, if it's not responsive, then the users will get the basically completely zoomed out thing where they can't read anything, or they can tap to zoom in and then they can see maybe a quarter or a fifth of the width of your screen at one time and they have to scroll sideways all the time. That's not a great experience on a mobile device. What people have done in the past is have a separate website for mobile devices. So you might have a completely separate domain name, you know, mobile.anu, I think we have at the moment. Um, but where does this end? Do you have a, a special website for mobiles, a special one for iPads, a special one for this, for that? It's better to just have the one website and have that respond to all of the different devices. And here's a kind of a bit of a hippie statement about how we should respond to the ebb and flow of all things. Um, John Alsop is uh, a big name in the responsive design uh, circles. Basically saying that the web is the way it is at the moment because it came from the print world. Um, on print, you basically lay it all out on the page and that's it. It doesn't move and the piece of paper stays the same size. So that's what we copied onto webs, uh, onto the web. Uh, now that we have all these different devices, uh, it would be better if we could actually respond to that and you know, embrace that. So how would we work out whether we should bother? Um, what we've done is look at the ANU network and also some analytics. Um, you can do the same with your websites. This is uh, the usage on the ANU wireless. So this is a on-campus bring your own device. You can see that the iPhones and Androids make up uh, more than half the users there. What is interesting is that the amount of traffic that they're pulling is tiny in comparison to the desktops, uh, the laptops. So this is either saying that people are just pulling out their phone to do a, a tiny little task and putting it away, or maybe they're pulling out their phone and looking at our website and giving up because they actually can't use it. Um, it's hard for us to say. <laughs> What's going on there? Another thing that we found was that people have on average uh, 1.6 devices. So every person has, uh, well, let's say every second person has two devices uh, at our uni. So they'll have a phone plus a tablet or a tablet plus a laptop or a phone plus a laptop. Um, it would be nice if our website would be usable on both for them and give uh, a consistent experience. And there's a Windows phone down the bottom. 
uh, we can also check our analytics. So just using Google Analytics is what we've done here. Um, the main ANU front page had a million visits in August. 5% of those were on a mobile device. That includes the tablets. So that's not a great amount, a great deal at the moment, but um, we're thinking that will increase. Um, what I found interesting was that the four main browsers were pretty evenly split. Uh, we had almost 2,000 different device sizes looking at our website. So in the past, we designed for a max, uh, sort of an optimal screen size of 1280 wide. Um, obviously, that's not a great idea. We need to go responsive because there are so many different screen sizes looking at our website. Uh, there were 216 different types of mobile device looking at our website as well. So here we can see the browsers, um, IE was the top one. Safari was second, which I found surprising. Uh, Firefox and Chrome. So there's no real benefit to designing your website to work well with just one browser anymore. You really have to cover them all. Uh, the screen sizes that we're seeing access our site. Again, there's no real benefit to just designing for one screen size because it's so spread out. You can combine these things. Um, from this, I can tell that the most popular thing looking at our ANU front page is probably a MacBook Pro 13 inch, just because it's using Safari at that screen size. But I mean, the top one's 8%, the next one's 7 and a half ish next one's 7 There's no real um, uh, dominant player here looking at our website, so we're trying to cover basically everything. Uh, in terms of the mobiles, it's basically all iPads and iPhones, and then another 200 or so different types of Android. Right, so um, just a, a quick demonstration of the ANU website, um, just to give you an idea of what we're trying to deal with. Um, this is the ANU website. Um, but in fact, the ANU website consists of uh, a number of different websites all sort of loosely joined together, which uh, we're seeing on the screen here. Um, it turns out we have about a thousand different websites at the ANU. Um, about 400 of those are the ones that we kind of care about in terms of branding them. There are no websites. Each of these websites will be anything from 10 pages to thousands of pages. And they're still going. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, from what I can tell, there's 260 different IP addresses serving up web content. So that's kind of equates to physical servers. Uh, we have a web publishers group on campus where we try and engage with people, get them doing things the right way, or at least the way that we want them to. Um, we have almost 400 people registered on that as content authors or people interested in the web. We have 12, at least 12, different types of CMS on campus. Um, we don't have an official CMS. Well, they tried, but it was a disaster. And uh, we want to make as many of these websites responsive as we can. Um, so the way that we do that is we have a style server that's serving up the CSS and JavaScript. So our main web server can talk to that style server. But then those 400 other things also talk to the same style server. So any change that we make on that one in the middle gets propagated out. Um, and in that, so that's the way that we're hoping we can make all of our sites responsive. Um, so do we have any questions there before I dive into the implementation or just keep going? We can ask questions at the end. Uh, so what do we need to do to make our site responsive? Um, first of all, a lot of design. There's a little bit of coding with uh, CSS3 and some JavaScript. And then at the end, basically testing on as many things as you can. 
and then probably going back to the start and doing another iteration. Um, anybody read theoatmeal.com? Yep, good. I recommend looking this up. Um, a comic about how web design starts off, uh, website design starts off and descends into hell. So write that one down. If there's uh, just one thing that you take away from the talk today, take away that URL. So when we're designing for a responsive uh, website, what Scott has done here is uh, basically taken the, um, the website that we had at the moment. He's uh, taken his six-year-old's color pencils and he's basically drawn out everything that he had on the screen and then he's tried to fit it onto different device sizes to see how it'll move around. Um, so you can see we've got different columns and then on the smaller device he's put them stacked down underneath each other. Um, now I'm not really a designer, I'm more of a coder so I probably would have just dove in and started implementing. Um, however, I think this is really important um, in this thing. It is a responsive design and design is an important word in this. Um, so spending, I think he spent a few months at the start just looking at everything that we have on different websites at the ANU, seeing how they all fit together and working out how he could move them around on different screen sizes. So for implementing the, uh, the CSS, uh, there's a few things that we need to do. Um, first of all, we use percentage widths for everything from now on. Rather than saying this thing is 200 pixels wide, we just uh, say this is now 20% of the container that it's in. So before we had a, a fixed size for our website, it was 960 pixels wide. Um, now we're saying, okay, it's now 100% of the width of the browser. Um, in our fixed width uh, side at the moment, we have different sizes of uh, divs that we use to line things up in a grid. So we have uh, a narrow thing that's 200 pixels wide or a double narrow we call it, which is 440 pixels wide and so on. So you can see here before we had 200 pixels wide. Afterwards, um, that thing becomes 20.8333% wide. And we work that out by doing 200 pixels divided by the 960, which was the total width. And that's how we get the 20%, the 20.833. 20 um, the margins as well, we want them to be percentages of their parent. So they were 20 pixels wide you do 20 divided by 960, you get 2.08%. And then you basically go through all of your CSS code, apply that same formula everywhere. Anything that has a width, um, you turn that into percentage of its parent. Um, another thing you do is make every image or video um, just 100% of its parent. So as the thing moves in and out, those images will scale up and down to fit, to stay uh, fitting inside their parent. The yep, yep, so you just put that CSS code in and the browser takes care of the rest. Um, the next thing we'll want to look at with our responsive design is um, moving things around on different devices. So we use a thing called breakpoints um, these are the breakpoints that we're using on the ANU design. So basically, a small phone is anything up until 480 pixels. And then we have different breakpoints for whether the phone's portrait or landscape, or whether it's a, an iPad, sorry, a tablet, portrait and landscape. Um, at the top end, we're saying anything over 960 pixels is basically just the original design. We could have kept going there. We could have had a different design for maybe a 1280, a 1600, a 1900, and so on. Um, at this point, we're not doing that, but we'll probably do that in the future. 
So we implement our breakpoints um, using this thing called at media. Um, in CSS3, we can tell the CSS to, um, to only run certain parts of the, the code depending on what we give it in this at media call. Um, so here we're saying if we're on a screen, so not a printer, and the device width is less than 480 pixels, then we'll want to run just this stuff in, this, in these brackets. And you can put these things one after the other for the different screen sizes. So as an example here, um, on the smallest screen, uh, we want to overwrite the CSS that we had before. And we're going to change the width of our div classes. Before we had uh, the narrow ones were 20%. Um, on, the sc on the smallest screen size, now we're saying, OK, now the narrow ones are actually going to be 87 and a half percent with some margins. So that's basically the full width of the screen. And we're doing that for the narrows and the wides and so on. We'll carry on with all of our widths. Yeah, yeah, that can be confusing. Um, but basically, you've done that. You've done your design first. You've worked out how many things can fit on the different screen sizes. And then you just go through applying that formula of um, the old width divided by its parent um, width um, gives you that percentage. So you can see here on the smallest size, um, the narrow and the wide, they're basically the same size. They all stack down the screen. On the next, uh, next device size up, the, the narrows, we can fit two of them, but the wide, we can only fit one. So it carries on like that, and we'll have uh, four or five different at media sections in our code now with, uh, for all the different devices, giving them different widths. So just to uh, illustrate how that looks on the screen of the device, um, before, we could stack four of those narrow things across the screen on a, on a laptop or a desktop. When we're looking at a, a small phone screen, uh, we can only fit one across, and they all follow down the screen. And you know, the next size up, they'll, they'll be placed at different places on the screen. Now, I was going to give a, a demo. Let's try it again. <coughs> No, and it's not working. Okay. All right, here's some I prepared earlier. <laughs> Um, where's that going to go? Come on, there we go. So, the uh, ANU homepage on a large device, so a desktop or a laptop, we can see there's four columns across the bottom. Um, as we go down to smaller size devices, so this one on a 600 wide screen. Um, the first thing we've done is compare them there. We've basically dropped that left column of navigation. So this fits um, on an iPad now. Um, you can see the Twitter, Facebook, etc. icons down the bottom left of the, the big screen. We've just moved them up to the top to utilize that space a little bit better. And you can see we've got some horizontal navigation at the top there for home, students, research, so on. Um, we've now, on the smaller screen size, put that into a drop-down menu. So you've tried to retain all the elements? Yeah. Yeah we've, yeah, we've tried to retain all the elements, um, but keep them on, but somehow put them on a smaller screen.
is a uh, smaller screen again. So we've taken the, uh, the events column there, made that the full width of the screen. Um, the other two little news type things there, we've put them next to each other. And the, uh, the main picture up the top there has become a lot smaller. We've dropped some of the content there. We've dropped the description of the news story and just put in the heading. And then on the smallest device, so a mobile phone, um, we've dropped some of the, the search boxes up the top in the very right top corner. And we've just stacked everything straight down the screen. So when the user loads this site up on their mobile phone, um, rather than being zoomed right out, not being able to read anything, immediately they get the, um, the information that we want them to read first. Um, they have to scroll a lot more down, obviously, but there's none of that sideways scrolling. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, so just for the um, the microphone, Sorry. that was about. Um, loading all these resources and uh, the time that that will take over a mobile phone network. Um, the good thing about the app media stuff is that you can put that in one file and it can call other files. So you don't have to load everything. You can um, have the app media size up to 480, load this other file. Um, it can do all the, other, all the work in the other file. You can completely skip a lot of the things that you would normally load on your main site, and in that way you can make it a lot quicker as well. Okay. Um, so the next thing I'll talk about is a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, you don't really need JavaScript to make it responsive, but it, um, it helps a lot with uh, your navigation so who uses jQuery on their site? Hopefully all of you. If you don't use jQuery, just do it. Um, it makes your life so much easier. A uh, little bit of code here. So let's say we wanted to run some jQuery or JavaScript um, whenever we cross one of those breakpoints as the device size changes. Um, this is how we would do it. We set a callback on the, the window resize function, and we basically store the old value when, whenever the, the window size changes. Um, if we notice that it passes over one of those breakpoints, then we can call off to a function to do whatever we like. Um, some of the responsive sites, as you move the, the window size, rather than just jumping from one thing to another, you'll actually see the things sort of flow around. It looks really trippy. Um, that's how they're doing this sort of thing. I'll make all these slides available, so don't feel as though you have to scribble this down. Um, there are lots of JavaScript libraries out there to help you with your responsive design. Um, so here's one called Touchdown. Basically what it does is take, say, an unordered list that we've styled on the main site here, and without you having to do any code, it turns it into one of these drop-down menus. So basically, for free, you can change your navigation to something that's a lot more concise and um, hopefully easier on a small device. Uh, however, we tried it on one of our menus that's, uh, that looks like this, where everything drops out to uh, show other things. And you end up with something like this, which is not so good. Let's have a look at that on a, a mobile. So here's our menu, and this is what Touchdown has done to it. Um, as you can see, it's just not usable. Any drop-down list on an iPhone, they 
get rid of all the formatting. So we had nice little steps with spaces so you could kind of tell which things were underneath other things and that just disappears. So that's uh, touchdown. Works kind of well for some situations, but obviously here it doesn't. Um, another thing you can do is just use CSS to display or hide certain things on your page as the screen size changes. Um, so basically you'll code everything up two or three times um, and hide two of them and as the screen size changes you'll just show different ones based on what you want the user to see. Um, so in the top uh, top right corner of the ANU site we have a, a search thing with radio buttons and a, a go button. On the medium sized screens we've changed that to be a, a drop down rather than the radio buttons. On the very smallest screen uh, we just have a, a search button that when they tap on it it slides down using some jQuery, slides down another box that has all the things in it. So that way you can um, retain the functionality but um, free up some of the screen space on the smaller devices. Um, or you can just float everything left in your CSS and that's a legitimate way to move your navigation around the screen. Um, so you can see here on a big screen they all stack across. Once you get down to the smaller one they don't fit across so they all just flow down underneath each other. And yeah, for the navigation, there are so many different things out there. Um, just do a, a search for responsive web design, JavaScript, and you'll find heaps. There's one that I found just the other day. Um, that takes a thing with uh, a menu with uh, drop downs and turns it into a, a menu that's stacked the other way with um, carousel type things that open and close. And yeah, really fancy. Um, another thing you need to do is in all of your HTML you have to set the scale. Um, this is so that on the, the iPhone rather than showing a zoomed out view it will actually try and show it at 100% so it fits into the window. Um, unfortunately there's a bug in that that if you take your iPhone and you turn it sideways and then you turn it back it gets a bit confused and the scale is completely wrong. Um, so there's more JavaScript to, um, to fix that up for you. Okay, so what about IE? Um, none of this will work in IE 6 through 8. There are some uh, more JavaScript things that you can drop in to try and make it work in IE. Um, that only works if your CSS file and JavaScript file is on the same domain name as your website, which um, as I showed before, we have the one style server and hundreds of other ones all pointing at it, so that's not going to work for us. Um, IE 9 and 10 will work with the new at media calls. Um, so basically what we've decided to do at ANU is just ignore IE for this. Um, they will get the basically the, the large screen size site, um, which is fine for a laptop or a desktop and there are really no devices out there running IE 6 through 8 on a mobile. Well, when I say no, I mean, you know, less than half a percent of our users will be using that. We're happy with that. Um, as the new Metro stuff comes out on the new Windows phones, they'll be using IE 10, I think, so this will all start to work for them, which is good. Um, so testing, basically you have to test as many things as you can on as many different devices as you can. Finding one Android user and just getting them to look at your site, that's not enough. Um, what we did was offer free cake and muffins and got as many different people as we could with as many different devices as we could to come into the room, sit there and we could actually see them using the site. We could see on their screen when things weren't quite... Uh, looking quite right. Um, every version of Android will have a different browser that's built in. Um, there's Firefox as well. Um, there's one called Dolphin that we found a lot of people were using. I mean, who knew? Um, apparently it's popular, so 
you, know, you find out these things when you get a bunch of people in the room that are using things that are different to what you have. Um, after our testing, we've uh, got a huge long list of bugs. So yeah, we're going back to the design process and um, coding a bit more. Um, so here's a bunch of links. Um, the one at the top is actually a, an ebook that you pay for. But if you're thinking about getting into this um, for your own website, I'd recommend you have a look at that. Uh, it basically starts off at the, um, the really basic and takes you through um, everything that you need to know. And there's heaps of stuff out there. Um, I'm going to put these slides up so you can go through these links. All right. That was a bit quick, I think. Um, so, do we have any questions? I guess with your central repository of yep. CSS, uh, is that going to be mandated that everyone use that central repository? Right, OK. And, and or are you going to get some type of registry? You know? Sure. Um, so with our CSS, um, we have different versions of the style. Um, we're currently on our third version. This responsive stuff will be fourth version. Uh, we have a, a registry of all the sites using it. And they each get a unique ID. And we can set things at our end to say which version of the style they're using. So what we will do is um, they can tell us when they're ready to try out the responsive thing. We can turn it on for just their site. Um, and that means that they'll be getting the, um, the version 4 of our styles. Um, they can test it out maybe on their development server, hopefully, if they've got one, and make sure it all works. And you know, we'll go through the, ho the, the, the whole list um, that way. So we'll be doing the main gateway first. And hopefully, people will like the idea and want to switch over. Right, so you mean... Sort of okay, yep, sure. Like, uh, or stuff, it should be free out there. Yep, yep. Um, why don't you guys just pop one of those rather than going through and doing all this stuff? Yep. Um, I'm probably not the best person to answer that. Um, so what do the, the frameworks provide? Uh, well, I mean, well, like you said, there's some that are fully responsive, but you know, 100% with, um, and there's yep. some of them that just met from one layout to one layout. Well, I think it's mm -hmm. Yep. There's, there's various out there that are being discussed. Yeah. Um, I had a guess. There's enough free ones out there that yeah. you shouldn't have to spend that much time yep. trying to figure out. Yep, sure. I had a guess. I think it's probably because we have um, a large number of sites that are already using our, our div classes that have different widths. So we didn't want to have to make um, 400 different people change 400 different websites with maybe thousands of pages each. Um, we wanted to use the, the classes that we had at the moment um, on our fixed width uh, sites and just uh, fiddle those so that those classes become responsive. I, th I think that's probably the reason. Um, yeah. yeah. What about feedback? Because when I yep. get a font of site online, it's very complicated. When you go on your iPhone, Yeah. So I quite like the content one, but there's some other, like the Sydney Morning Herald. Sorry, have files for the Sydney Morning Herald. It's pretty dreadful to have any of it. Right. The sort of feedback you're getting from people who can either support people or the people who are using it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. It's not that says click on the Facebook thing at the bottom, but it's up on the top. Yeah, <laughs> OK. Um, we have been looking at doing surveys but there tends to be a bit of resistance to popping up a survey on our site. Um, that tends to annoy a lot of people. So it's hard to strike that balance of how do you get feedback on a medium where people are coming and you just don't know what they're doing and they're going away. And yeah, um, we have uh, internal testing. We have a lot of that. Um, but in terms of people out there, you know, potential students who might be looking at our site, we have no idea how they feel about the website. 
um, yeah, that's probably a topic for a, a whole other talk. How do you actually get <laughs> that kind of feedback for your websites? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, for the breakpoints that you're with, do yep. they cooperate with the higher resolution iPhone? Um, so they're looking at the, the screen width, yeah. which I think the, the higher resolution iPhones report based on, uh, it's sort of independent of the DPI. Okay. So the higher resolution ones are pretending to be a 320 wide screen, but they're kind of packing four pixels into every one pixel. Yep. yep. Um, you can, with the, uh, the app media things, you can um, put in the resolution as well. So you can, you, you can split it up in, into even more levels if you want to do that. Yep. All right. Anything else? Let's go to lunch. <laughs> Thank you.